G'day everyone, it is Duckville here. We've got a Zerg versus Protoss here today. It is going to be on Derelict Watcher TE. I'm still not actually sure how I feel about this map. Um, I think it's a little bit of an interesting one, but we'll get to that in a minute. We'll see who's playing in our game. Firstly, down at the bottom left-hand side of the map in our sporting position down here at the 8 o'clock as our Red Zerg player. It is Evil Genius's Machine. EG Machine, of course, one of the players who has been around the StarCraft scene for a very long time with some of his uh, brethren in the EG crew in control and then uh, the former EG's Hydra, some of the players from the American scene who have been around for an extremely long time since the Brood War days and uh, just uh, still continuing on, marching forward in StarCraft 2 as it were. Uh, this is actually, like, I'm actually recording this right now as, um, the pizza eating contest is going on featuring Machine, and apparently he's a bit of a beast when it comes to eating, but we'll see if he's good enough to smash down his opponent up at the top right-hand side. Playing for the Clarity Gaming Academy, it is Bones. We've seen, uh, quite a few replays from Bones, including that, uh, very long matchup against a Villo on, uh, on Akalon Waste. If you haven't seen that one, um, and you've got a little bit of time, and by a little bit I mean about 40 minutes or so, go and check that one out. It was a little bit of a, uh, uh, an interesting macro game between those two players. Uh, Bones, of course, a very, uh, fantastic macro player, and, um, it was, a, it was a really weird game just because it went so long and it was so passive between the two of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave the rest of that up to your imagination or to watch that game yourself. So, Bones is, uh, did release this replay pack number 5, you can find it on uh, teamliquid.net, you can uh, just, do, just do a search for like Bones and replay pack 5, or you can have a look on his Twitter, he's linked it there as well, I believe I did retweet it too, so uh, have a look at, uh, what is it, at Clarity Bones is his Twitter account, he's going to open us up with a Nexus first, starting uh, just over here, we'll probably see a Forge go down pretty quickly, there it is, nice and safe from Bones, nothing too crazy, there was a, there was a build of White Rider, used to do, which I don't think he does anymore. I, I'll be honest, I haven't actually seen White Rod play for a little while now. I keep missing WCS EU um, just because it's on at a really bad time for us here in Australia, but um, it was actually like a gateway first Nexus expand, and it was it was actually quite uh, interesting to watch him do that, but um, no, no other players seem to do that kind of build anymore, which is uh, a little bit unfortunate. Obviously it is very, very risky, but um, you know, if you can catch some players out, get that warp gate tech up pretty quickly, along with an Nexus first, then you can put yourself in a really nice position. But Bones is going to play nice and safe here with the gateway just coming up a cannon shortly after that as well. And as you can see, Machine, happy to expand. We're going to move up to the third base here. This is uh, one of the features of this map, is that the third base is, is actually quite enclosed, despite being very... Uh, in a way, it's very exposed across on on the uh, the cliff side of the base here. But other than that, it's really difficult to uh, get up here sometimes when you uh, just try and approach a Zerg plank. Because, of course, when their creep spread starts, it normally starts to spread out this way and across to the third base as well. And you often see players just sort of... Um, like a lot of players actually sort of set up uh, some static defense along this area here. Not only protects the third, you know, in a, you know, because it's a short distance across that way, but also protects the natural as well. So that is uh, something which we may expect to see out of uh, out of machine in this match. But for the moment, we're still, of course, in that early game. Bones picking up gases one and two, getting started on uh, that gas income that he needs. We'll see if he picks up plus one weapons, a stargate, or anything like that. For some reason, he is just pinged down here. I'm not sure what that ping was for, but uh, he does have uh, around about 200 gas now, so he's easily going to get started with that, uh, with the warp gate tech, and we'll see, what's he going to follow, is he going to, once we get to 100, is he going to get weapons, looks like a no, looks like we'll get a sentry coming out, so uh, just a double zealot, and then a single sentry coming out for the moment, the mothership core also on the way from bones, this is, um, this is a map where you can look to expand relatively quickly as a Protoss player, and I do like that Bones is just clearing out that third base, just as a giving himself an option to move down there if he so desires. And with that Mothership Core coming out, with the uh, with the Warp Gate tech just on the way, and it looks like he's really building up quite a lot of minerals as well, I would not be surprised if we see him move down to the third base. As I said, he's a very good macro player, and uh, is generally quite passive as well. It's not, it's not uh, in fact, I'm trying to think to the last time I've seen Bones, especially in a Protoss versus Zerg actually do some sort of 
uh, two base play or something very early on. And uh, right as I say that, comes down to the third base. It's going to throw down a pylon. Probably Nexus after that, and then a couple of gateways. It's, it's very simple to wall this off. You only need uh, a couple of gateways to get this all set up. You know, just a couple of gateways along here. Your pylon up the top as well, and then you're all set to go. But, as you can see, the machine knows what's going on. He saw that third Nexus going down very quickly here at the, uh, around about the 710 mark, I believe that was. And with the protection of the Mothership Core and those couple of sentries, we should be fine to hold that down for the moment. So, Bones is going to start us off with that very uh, heavy sort of macro play here. We've got a an Overlord was going to try and jet through to see what's going on, but... With the fact that Machine saw that this Nexus was going up, he knows, alright, it's most likely going to be a Robo. You rarely see players go for a third base and then go Stargate. It's it's quite a lot of investment to try and get both of those things up and running. Whereas with a, uh, a Robo facility, what you can do is get a couple of Immortals out, protect yourself from any possible Roach bus, have a lot of sentries up and running, and then you're all fine and dandy to get that third base economy up and running. Meanwhile, for our Zerg player, he's taken his own fourth base, which Bones has now scouted out. We're going to see what's going on inside the main. The lair is only just about to finish up right now, so around about uh, 8.40 on that lair is going to be the timing for that, as we can see double evo chambers down the back roach warren is prepared his drone count up to a total of 69 so not doing too badly with that at all and machine is going to continue to drone up just for the moment here this is a point where as the zerg player you can say well, all right well he's taken that third base he's he's fortified it very heavily there with the gateways and the cannon what i can do is take my fourth get the economy into a beautiful shape which it is right now we're just getting that uh get just hitting that sort of 70 uh 70 80 drone mark right now and uh, get a lot of tech rolling because the Protoss player with the robo facility only just sort of uh, starting to crank out some of those offensive units now is not going to be able to get too many Colossus out just yet. There's still going to be a few more minutes till those are up and running. So this is a time where Machine is going to say, Alright, we'll get the uh, plus one to weapons and carapace up and running. Infestation Pit is even done. Hydralist Den with the Groove Spines and the Muscular Augments are going to get up and running as quickly as possible. And then we'll probably see him look towards a, uh, a third base attack. Because it's a very common way to react to this quick... Th to the quick third base of a Protoss is to pick up a, uh, a sizable amount of Hydras, also some uh, Lings as well, and then try and push up against this. The one problem I have with this, we sort of mentioned it before on uh, on Machine's side of the map, is that attacking into this can be a bit, bit difficult with the angles that you, you're trying to use to attack up into this. Not only is there a gateway wall here protecting this, but there is also the possibility that you can get flanked from the top side. We can see the bones could just come straight down if he uh, tries to set up some force fields across the side here. That's a very trapped Zerg army if it tries to come in through that position here. So. I'll be very interested to see how uh, Machine tries to adapt to this. As we said, his macro is going to be uh, off the charts right now. 88 drones are now up and running. His creep spread also just pushing through the middle section of the map as well and looking to go towards the top side. But he's uh, still just slowly building up those forces for the moment. So we've now got a, uh, a few hydras coming out. The hive is also just about done. So a, uh, a slightly later lair tech, but then a very quick hive straight after that. So he's going to look to uh, really get this tech pumping right now. We have a few static defenses back inside the, the natural base here. Nothing inside the main. So the possibility of uh, of some ore prisms getting some damage done is, is quite an option here for Bones if he so desires to go into that particular direction. But for the moment, He's happy to scout out, sees that the fourth base is up and running there, and he's happy to throw down another four gates. The extended thermal lance is on the way. Blink is just about done. Storm is now researching here, and the Colossi have begun. So Bones is really setting himself up here for that mid to late game, which is uh, unlikely that we'll see these guys try to engage in the next couple of minutes or two, given that Machine is now getting his Ultralist Cabin up and running. He's going to want those upgrades. As we can see, triple Evo Chamber for uh, max upgrades as quickly as possible. The plus one on the melee is just about done. We can see the Carapace, and a plus two Missile Attacks is also on the way. So Machine is just uh, he's also trying to look towards that late game. We'll see if he's just going to try and uh, flat out try and barge his way through with Ultras and uh, possibly like Ultraling and uh, Queens. I've seen uh, Queens be added in quite a lot. Of course, uh, Root Gaming's Fitzy, um, Quanticune, all these guys like to add in quite a lot of queens when they're playing. And uh, we'll see if uh, Machine is going to go in the same kind of direction. But Bones, for the moment, going to look to take a fourth base. As we said, he's a very uh, highly skilled macro player and just happy to sort of sit back, 
take his bases, get his economy up and rolling. We can see the uh, the double robo inside the main base here, and uh, he's just happy to sort of take his time, get the economy up and rolling, and just continuously scout. This is one thing, like for the players, if you're uh, you know if you're sort of looking to try and emulate this uh, macro style of bones, I cannot stress enough the fact of uh, getting those those hallucinated phoenix out there they're a very quick scout but it's also a great way to see when your opponent is moving out and as we can see he knows that those ultra lists are out now out on the field and machine is uh he needs to be very careful just makes needs to make sure these these guys are in a good position but i mean their upgrades are about to uh sort of start kicking in we'll have the chitinous plating up and running plus three two weapons on the hydra is just about uh, done as well it's on, it's on the way plus two carapace is also being researched right now i don't think the bones really wants to be out in this position right here and in fact uh, his fourth base is gonna be in a little bit of trouble I would say because uh, like as I said it's kind of hard for him to defend with only the three colossi we do have all these zealots on the ground but the upgrades are a little bit further behind than where you would normally expect him to be and this nexus I, I don't think this is gonna survive too long we've got the uh, the ultras the hydras the queens and also quite a lot of lings now approaching that fourth base and bones I think wisely has just said you know what you can take it I don't really care about that too much uh, you know I've got a third base so I should be okay as long as bones doesn't move out and uh, you know sort of uh, lose this army very uh, very sillily trying to uh, sillily I don't know if that's a word uh, trying to uh, to defend this fourth base and he should be okay because down at the bottom side we've got zealots attacking in we've got zealots across on this side as well is there a is there what, what is that is this oh it's an observer okay I was gonna say what is that in the middle of the map there for bones but the zealots have made their way across into uh, his opponent's third base and have taken care of quite a lot of the drones there we can see there have been a total of nine workers killed, not too bad at all there for Bones, so he's uh, certainly made work of his opponent's uh, third base right there. The fourth uh, down at, or the fifth, sorry, down at the bottom right hand side is also being taken out by these zealots, and Machine has lost a little bit of his, his economy in that regard. He would really be loving to have this fifth base up and running right now, but unfortunately just not able to hold that tight, given that his forces were out on the map. So Bones has been able to get a couple of uh, really nice economic harassment victories is there taking out a few drones taking out a hatchery and uh, stopping the mining at the third base but it looks like it will cease for the moment so the ultras now coming back three on the weapons and uh, armor are now going to be researched right now for machine so he's going to be looking very nice right now with uh, all of those ultras out of the map but the big question is will he be able to deal with all these immortals we've got eight immortals in this big force of units here for bones a very robotics heavy army and as you can see, a few immortals are going to be added into the mix, along with some hallucinated immortals. So he's going to just sort of move out and make it look like he has this massive, massive force and sort of try and attempt to make Machine move back, try and make him say, wow, there's actually too many immortals there for me to engage into. Not to mention the immortals help tank quite a bit as well. So if he can uh, just sort of hold his opponent back, secure this fourth base, Bones is going to be in a very nice position right now. And as you can see, the uh, Ultral is trying to approach this fourth base yet again, another time warp going down slowing down the ultras from retreating too far these queens are going to be in a little bit of trouble as well but here we see that the immortals now at the front storms all over the back on the hydras the immortals just absolutely ripping apart those ultras at the front and bones takes a huge victory there while we see a few more zealots attacking into the third base of machines so machine is just getting torn apart in that battle there too many immortals they've got their plus three they do 65 per shot against armored targets and that is just a ridiculous amount to comprehend right there so machine has been forced back right now he's got a high a high bank of minerals at this point but the gas is his struggling point as you can see he's built up another force of uh, of of ultras and hydras now just coming out quite a lot of lings looking to make their way out on the map as well and you know if they get their uh, he doesn't actually have the adrenal glands up and running just yet. He's, uh, he's, he's not even researching it at this point. But if he can maybe get some runbys onto the third base or something like that, he may be able to slow down his, his opponent's economy. But at this point, Bones is in a very strong position right now. We can see some zealots again making their way into the attempted fifth base of Machine. 
they will be cut down by all those lings there. 3-3 three, three on the upgrades for these lings is about to finish up. Of course, that also helps out these ultras as well with their 6 billion armor that they have. And Bone says, you know what? I've got some blink. We'll make use of this uh, mobility of these stalkers. Jump into the third base. Takes down the hatchery. And Machine is again forced to rebuild this hatchery over here. He lost the fifth down at the bottom side before. That's been rebuilt. Now it's the third this time. It's, it's a little bit of tag between these uh, between these guys trying to see who can take out whose base so uh, Bones is uh, pretty secure in his economy as well let's keep that in mind 69 pros at the moment four bases up and running cannons all over the place at that fourth base but here we go we do have an engagement in the middle section of the map we can see that Bones is uh, actually struggling for position here with no mothership call to recall he actually is going to lose quite a lot the hydras at the back just doing so much DPS right now. It looks like the Archons may go down as well, but no machine does back up for the time being. And that's a that's a pretty critical uh, victory there because you you do need to keep in mind that uh, Bones was, was using quite a very uh, a high impact, high cost army there with a lot of Colossi, a lot of Immortals, and these units do take a lot of time to get back out. So we'll see him Chrono boosting out those as soon as possible. And uh, it looks like Machine wants to attack into the into the third base of Bones, but again. This angle is very precarious for a Zerg player to attack into. We can see that the Immortals, the Archons, and the few Templar that are still out are going to try and approach from the top side to try and trap in those units that we uh, mentioned before that you can try and sandwich them into this position here and with Zealots coming out at the front he's going to look for a little bit of a surround here Archon's very effective at dealing with some of these units here and with the Storms going down on top of the Hydras it looks as if Bones is going to win this battle the Immortals at the back not doing the most efficient damage here but the Queens with their 3-3-3 are just absolute mince meat here for the Archons but with more Hydras coming into the fight it looks as if Bones will be forced back yet again Hydras are still making their way across the map there with their muscular augments there. Wait, does he? He doesn't actually have... Oh, yes, he does. Okay. I was gonna say, they looked a little bit slow, what was going on there, but uh, it looks as if Machine is now gonna make his way into the natural. Just a couple of models here, ready to defend. Seven DTs are now whopping in, and DTs may be the savior of the day here, because Machine does not have a single overseer on this side of the map. He does have a couple of overlords towards the back, and uh, uh, randomly strewn across the map, but I mean, they were just in no position to help with that so bones is able to secure his natural base for the time being important to keep in mind that the fourth base is still operational we still have 69 probes mining away at these uh well sort of three mining bases at this point so bones is able to regroup his army get a lot of archons together get those templar back up and running and what he does need to do which i would like to see is just another quick uh, phoenix scout if he can if he can find some sentry energy somewhere just to do a quick phoenix scout to find out what the composition of machine is he'll be able to identify that we now have infestors starting to be added into the mix so it's going to be sort of a uh, an interesting composition of ultra infestor and hydra a very gas heavy composition with all of those infestors being added in but one that he can support now that he does have the 10 geysers up and running lots of gas coming in for the eg zerg player here he is blocking off any attempt at a uh, possibly a, a fifth base for bones down at the bottom side here but he, he can of course jump up to this side he will need to remove that overlord though but uh, we can see the machine is uh, now starting to move into position here i'm not a hope he doesn't attack into this i don't know if this is the best idea because he doesn't actually have like a huge force of units right now a dt will come about and scan out that this attack is coming in it looks like machine is just going to go for broke right now wants to take down this fourth base as quickly as he can but his opponent now coming about archons at the front immortals doing some damage as well fungal growths do come about but not really hitting too much and yeah I, like that kind of feels like a bit of a waste there to me by machine storms going all over those hydras there we can see some more storms up on the top of the ramp there feedbacks also all over those those infestors and machine I, again i really don't like that attack he like he did need to get some damage done because i mean he is uh against the sort of a four base protoss but i mean just trying to attack into this sort of position here where you've got you know a lot of cannons protecting obviously the protoss forces are nearby consisting of a lot of immortals a few archons and some stalkers it, it kind of felt like a little bit of a whimsical attack there just given the fact that it wasn't even max supply it was about 150 supply at that point so machine is still He's still not out of this game at all. I mean, he's still at a position of uh, 70 drones. We've got all these five bases all together. Of course, uh, the main is now mined out, the natural is mined out, and the 
is there's also double spire keep in mind but uh the third is starting to get a little bit low as well so we'll want to see machine uh looking to take a six base most likely this base down at the bottom side here i wouldn't really expect him to look to try and take this one up the top because this is the path that uh bones is going to expand towards his his next base is definitely going to be this one there is no real way for him to try and take this bottom right hand side base so we will see bones start to uh get his forces back together again we've got a mothership core now back in the mix we've got a lot of immortals out they've got 203 on their upgrades still a little bit behind with those up is he is he rebuilt the forge anywhere no i don't think we have a forge at all Oh, there is, sorry. It's down here. So he is researching plus three on the armor right now. And uh, once that gets operational, he's going to have a very, very nice ability to engage the Zerg player here. And we can see the Stalkers blinking forward. A couple of Storms getting thrown down as well. No feedbacks, but there we go. A couple of feedbacks at the backside there. But the Templar are getting torn down by the Hydras. But, I mean, there is just so much power here from Bones with the Immortals just ripping apart all of those units there. A nice fungal catches some of those Stalkers. But, I mean, Machine is, is very troubled right now just because we've got no six bases. Third is just about to mine out. And, uh, you know, you could possibly argue this is one of the points of this map is that taking these corner bases is very, very a hotly contested part of this map. So, Machine, not a single use of muters in this game. Like, I know there have been a lot of, uh, a lot of Blink Stalkers used throughout the game. And, of course, those Templar are there out the back as well. But, I mean, some harassment could have been uh, possibly utilized but I mean at this point it's uh, starting to possibly uh, look a little grim here for Machine but he does have Neuroparasite being researched not often you get to see that coming out Infestors coming out Ultras and Hydras as well he is looking to get get a, uh, a big force together but one thing I really want to see from Machine is just sort of making sure that he's got all of these units together you don't want to sort of move out with a very uh, uh, sort of blase sort of move out with uh, just a few Hydras just a few Infestors and you know a couple of uh, ultras al along the way for the ride. You kind of want to have everything together. You don't want to be facing up against a Protoss force like this. Massive amounts of immortals, massive amounts of stalkers, storms available as well, and uh, it is quite a very uh, deadly thing to comprehend. I think we had uh, an infestor drop here. I did actually miss that one, but uh, really interesting infestor drop probably there from uh, from Machine trying to make use of a Destiny style uh, infestor hit squad there. But as you can see, still no attempt at a, uh, a six base at the moment from Machine, he's uh, he, he does have a good eye on what's going on at this base down the bottom side, as well as this one up here as well, but Bones soon he's going to be able to take this base, and I think if he can get that base up, even if he just starts it and forces a fight up here, he is going to be uh, pretty much in the hot seat to take the win here in this game, because he's been very, very slow and passive, a very nice way to play if, you, if you're aware of how to control it, if you can control that tempo, make the Zerg fight where you want to fight as a Protoss, then you can really take engagements in your favor. So, Machine looking to move down towards the southern side of the map, obviously wanting to clear off this Zealot here, and uh, with a couple of swipes, that Ultra does clear the Zealot out, it looks like. What are these infestors doing over here? Very sneaky attack there from Machine, trying to drop out a couple of infested Terrans. These guys in Wings of Liberty with some upgrades there would be tearing up this base right now, but unfortunately for the Zerg players, as I'm sure many of them are, uh, you know, just sort of sad about, is that the infested Terrans don't do as much as they used to do anymore. And uh, we can see that thing starting to switch up a little bit here for Machine. He's now got... Wow, you do need to fix that up a bit there, Mr. Machine. He is going to try and build up this base down at the bottom right-hand side here, but those drones not mining is a little bit of a uh, an unfortunate situation for him. But what I was going to say is that we do have five Corruptors now coming out, along with the plus two to the Flyer attacks being researched right now. He's going to add in some Broodlords. This adds in a little bit of a uh, sort of a, a timer for uh, Bones because you can look to try and attack into some of these bases. You can attack from the edges of the cliffs in here. Um, just sort of looking to slowly poke away at these bases. You can use this dead zone up at the top to try and just push in on this base if you can possibly get rid of this base and then limit bones to just the just basically the one mining base. I mean the, the third base is just about gone. The fourth is uh, getting reasonably low as well but I mean if he can force a fight at, uh, at bones' attempted fifth base then he may be able to uh, secure his own victory that way but I mean bones look at this army it is so powerful right now. There is basically nothing 
soldiers are going to do against this. The Stalkers are going to be able to control the ground. They're going to be looking to try and blink under any Broodlords that get made. And in fact, there you go. We do have a couple of Broodlords now coming out. And, you know, if they can blink under these few Broodlords and take them out, that is effectively it. Because other than that, I don't actually know what machine is going to do against this army. It is just so powerful. Despite the upgrades being a little bit slower from Bones in this game, he has finally gotten out to the 303. And that means that uh, these guys are going to do so much damage. 65, as we mentioned before, on those uh, Immortals here. And taking advantage of the high ground, it looks as if Bones is able to take a few snipes on some of those units here. And if the Broodlords can come across and he may be able to take a fight here but I mean they're so slow this is this is uh, part of the reason why you really see broodlords on this map there is so much exposed open space across the center section of the map and now we can see that the uh, tempest have started to come out from bones as well only needing two or three I, I, I doubt we'll see him build more than uh, just that sort of two three maybe four um, he should be able to take care of these Broodlords. As long as he keeps an eye on the Broodlord count, I highly doubt we'll see too many more Tempests come out, because that's basically all you need. I mean, these Tempests do a huge amount of damage. Uh, they do 85 against those massive air units, so he's going to have around about four of them coming out right now. We can see a few more are going to be added into the total. He is now maxed out as well. A Zealot going to go to town on the sixth base of Machine down at the bottom right-hand side here, and you can guarantee if this base does not go up, that Machine is not going to be able to win this game, because as we mentioned bones has now secured his own fifth base up towards the top right uh, the top center section of the map but the main battle now engages here in the center section of the map the tempest targeting down some of those brood lords the corrupt is going to go to work on the colossi and do get rid of those guys but i mean there are still so many immortals so many stalkers so many storms so much of everything for our protoss player right here and despite the fact that the tempest will eventually go down there is no way that machine is going to be able to win this game. The Immortals can now basically just 1A their way through the uh, through the middle section of the map all the way into the natural, possibly uh, just to clean up all of the tech that's down here because as we can see, Machine has got all, all three of his Evos, his uh, Infestation, the Great Aspire, all these kinds of things are ready to go here. And I mean, that is uh, the sign that the Zerg is uh, scrambling to try, and, uh, to try and salvage something in this game. A lot of Ling's being built. And I mean, Ling's are actually pretty decent against uh, Immortals. I mean, their attacks go through the hardened shield, so it's not as if that factors in. But when you've got all of these Immortals, I don't think so, Mr. Machine. So, we can see another attack coming down at the uh, the bottom right-hand side here. And uh, Bones is going to clean up this base. He is possibly going to even take that hatchery out. And as we said, that is pretty much it for Machine at this point. There is no real way to try and secure this. The Lings and the Hydras will come down and try and uh, save the day here. But I don't think it's going to be enough. It looks as if, uh, again, Bones is going to blink his way inside the third base. Takes down some of the Static D here. Once that is gone, the hatchery is definitely gone. The Tempest will come along. And, uh, well, it actually, he's just going to back out for now. I think just playing uh, a little bit safer than he needs to. But Bones could possibly just uh, just 1A, as we said, to take this game out. But he's going to he's gonna play safe for the moment. We do have some Spines moving across to the, to the sixth base of Machine. But, I mean... You know, there's there's a lot of Tempests, and last time I checked, there's uh, a lot of Immortals out as well, and Immortals do quite well <laughs> against Spine Crawlers. So, uh, this game is uh, definitely going to go the way of Bones very shortly here from Clarity Gaming Academy. Facing up against uh, EG's Machine, one of the, uh, the very long-time players of the StarCraft scene, able to get his economy up to a decent position after a, uh, a Nexus first from Bones, but then unfortunately just not able to attack into a very fortified, a very patient Bones, who is uh, able to work his way into a large Immortal Storm and Stalker Count, and is slowly going to siege up on this base here. This is going to be an absolutely hectic engagement. There you go. Storms across to the side. We can see the Immortals going to town on basically every single unit here. This is that point where having bonus to armor does not matter at all because you just do so much damage here. And they slowly move forward, take out the hatchery, drones, infestors, lings, hydras, everything is going down for machine. And that is pretty much it. And there is a GG from machine. A well played and a GG from Bones, a very uh, a slow but very progressive game there from Bones. As we said before, he's a very uh, macro orientated player. Be sure to check out his uh, his replay pack that he posted on Twitter and Team Liquid as well. And also have a look, uh, say hello on Twitter. Same thing for Machine, he's also on Twitter as well. Posted that before. Hope you enjoyed the match, I'll see you all next time. Because you can guarantee that now the Muslim has stabilized for the moment. He's got...
he's got these continuous uh, Marines now popping out. In fact, as I say that, they're not as continuous as I would have thought. But um, he's going to look to possibly go for some drops right now. And the time.